In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can control four buttons with just one analog pin. For this tutorial, you need an Arduino, the analog keypad, and three jumper wires male to female. So our keypad is using only one analog wire and they did a pretty clever thing to make it work with four buttons. So just going back in time where we had our analog in on the Arduino. When we have a five volt Arduino on zero volt, it be seen by our Arduino as a low and five volt is a high. So if we translate that to values, then zero volt is zero, 2.5 volt is around 512, and five volt is 1023. So this schematic shows how our keypad works. You have on the top left, you have the VCC, which is five volt, a number of resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4. As you can see, R1 to R3 is 1K ohm, and R4 is 2K ohm. So these are all there because in this situation, the current can flow through all the resistors and you don't have a short circuit. So then we have a couple of buttons, K4 till K1, and they are all connected to the AD pin on our keypad, and that one is, for example, connected to the Arduino on analog zero. So we can read analog values. So if we press, for example, K4, then the 5 volt will flow as indicated in yellow. And since it's 5 volt, it will be seen as a value of 1023. So if you look at K3, then you'll see that the current is going to the first resistor and we receive around 4 volts on the Arduino. The same with K2. The it goes through two resistors and then we see three volts. And the last one, K1, goes to all three resistors and then we see two volts. So with these voltages, we can actually detect which key is pressed because every voltage corresponds with a certain value on the analog zero. Making the circuit is actually pretty simple. We are starting by connecting our jumper wires to the analog keypad. The first step is to connect the green jumper wire with the AD pin on the keypad. AD means analog data. The center pin is for the ground, which we connect with the blue wire. The last one is the red wire, which we connect to pin VCC. The last step is to connect the keypad to the Arduino. We are connecting the red wire to the 5 volt on the Arduino, the blue wire to the ground, and the green wire to the analog zero. The code is very simple, it's just seven lines of code. So we start here on line 17 where we've defined a constant called AD pin, so the analog data pin, and it's connected to analog zero on the Arduino. In a setup, we initialize the serial monitor with 9600 baud, which means 9600 characters per second. And in the loop, we read the value of the AD pin, and that's our analog zero, and print it to the serial monitor. So I'm going to upload the code to the Arduino and show you what happens when I press some buttons. So I'm going to tools and say serial monitor, and as you can see, there are a lot of zeros, and that's correct because they don't press any buttons. Be aware that you not touch the back of the keypad because your hand will actually work as a resistor. When I do so, you see a lot of noise. So that's not what we want. So when I press the first button, we see a value around 400, which is correct. The second one is around 600. The third one is around 800. And the fourth one is 1023 because we are now opening the 5 volt directly to the analog, uh, analog pin on the Arduino. So this is working. 
then we can continue to the second sketch where we're going to determine which button has been pressed. So here on line 18 till 21 I've written down the values we've just measured when pressing the buttons. And everything in the setup is the same, the constant is the same. We've slightly changed the loop. So now we read the AD pin and store it in the AD value variable. And then we print to the serial monitor the outcome of this function. And the function is called button from value. And as a parameter, we give it the value we've read on the AD pin. And what it does, this function, is it returns the button number based on the analog value. So this function returns a byte, because we only have four numbers, so I've created a byte. And we give it the analog measured value, the AD value, as an integer. And what we're going to do is we're just going to check, because for number one, the value was 400, so we make sure we have some room around the 400. I'm not going to write down larger than 399 and smaller than 401 because it's analog. So 300 is enough. So we check if AD value is larger than 300 and smaller than 500. The same for the second button, but then we check between 500 and 700, and that's because here K2 is 600, and then we continue also with button number 3, and button number 4 only needs to check if the AD value is larger than 900. This is because there is no button 5, so everything above the 900 will be enough to say, well, it's button number 4. Here with button number 1, you might think we can do here the same. Why do we need to check if AD value is larger than 300? That's because when we don't press the button, the AD value is zero. So then uh, zero is smaller than 500, so it might think that we press number one, uh, button number one, which is not true. So if nothing matches, then here on line 57, we return zero, which means no button has been pressed. So another trick I do here, you see here if, 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 and if. The thing is that you could think, well, why aren't you using an else? Because if this one is true, then you don't have to look any further. That's true. But the trick is that when we return in a function, the execution of the function is stopped. So that means that if this one doesn't match, then it will check, for example, this one. If that match, it returns two, and this whole part is ignored. So for my readability, I like it to write it this way because I now can clearly see there are four ifs and not with all the else relationships I have to check out which if belongs to what else, etc. So this is all the code. I'm now going to upload this to my Arduino and see if it works. So I'm going to tools and open the serial monitor and I see a lot of zeros, so that's perfectly. So let's press button number K3 and I see a three, and I'm not seeing the measured values. So that's working nice. So the same for the first button, the second button, and the fourth button. So everything is working. So you've learned how to save three different wires, and you can now use one wire to read out four buttons. So that's quite nice. If you haven't enough pins around on your Arduino, you can save three. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And in the description of this video, you'll find a link to the course material, which contains the code, the circuit schematics, and there's also a list with all the uh, components used in this video. I see you in the next tutorial.